So, as you said, I'm, uh, my name is Thomas Froment. Uh, I have like uh, 25 years uh, of experience in software engineering and let's say DevOps operations. And within that context, uh, I was the lead of Thales in Oslo's program office uh, for around six years, uh, just before uh, joining uh, Commu uh, uh, as co-founder and CTO. And as you said, uh, today I am individual contributor in the InnoSource Common Foundation. Uh, I'm working in particular in the ISPO working group uh, initiated by Russ, I think, and trying to set up uh, the local chap the local French speaker uh, chapter of uh, InnoSource Common, as you can hear. <laughs> um, by the way, I really want to express my gratitude to, to InnoSource Common's members for inviting me today. And so, uh, from now uh, in this presentation, I will still assume that you are already familiar with what inner source is and that you came here wondering maybe how an inner source program office can justify its investment within uh, your company ecosystem. And just uh, before, before we begin, uh, I would like to briefly introduce why I am here with you today and why at Commu we are so much committed to inner and open source. Uh, at, the, uh, at the very beginning, we were three of us co-founders and uh, we realized that uh, we share the same vision. Uh, we are firmly convinced it's time to face uh, the big challenges uh, in front of us heads on. Uh, you know, uh, whether they are energy related, human related or social. And we have noticed that everywhere, uh, whether it is on social network, on the internet, we have plenty of inspiration. Inspiration is everywhere. And now we think it's more than time to turn that inspiration into action. And, and we believe that what we call massive cooperation is the way forward. And that's why we are committed to developing what we call the massive cooperation framework, the MCF uh, in open source, and make it, of course, to make it adaptable and contributive to all. And okay, so you are going to tell me, uh, maybe it looks nice, but no, what is it? What is the MCF concretely and so on? Let's see it on the field with uh, our topic of uh, today. And so, uh, I don't know if uh, some of you are ISPO leaders, or ISPO leads in, in the room, but you will, you will tell me if uh, the situation here from Jenny uh, uh, speaks, uh, speaks to you. Um, so, typical, typical issue uh, that Jenny is complaining about uh, as his lead is okay. My my members don't have time. Uh, on the other side, on company side, uh, my organization, my managers don't catch all the value. And very frequently, as as far as I see it, uh, the conclusion is it's a problem of mindset. And, and it's then usually the, the, the moment when we start complaining about middle managers. And, okay. So I, I know, I, I know, like you, uh, I think uh, that it's a critical, it's a critical thing. The mindset is a critical thing in many organizations. But no, we, we are still trying to move beyond just complaining about it. Um, so. This first uh, slide here is just a first reading read from MCF. And the first key is, OK, if you put yourself in, in the shoes of your members or in the shoes of your company, uh, look at everything you are asking them. Uh, it's a lot of investment, isn't it? It's a resource, time, money, all these things. But in reality, have you actually looked uh, beyond the requested value? Uh, uh, our one and two are requested value to, to the member and to your organization. Did you look at the, to the value that is being provided to them? Uh, I mean, when I say look, it's, did you look at all the details? Uh, as you see here, there are at least nine types of motivators for your members, and it may great, they vary greatly from one situation to another, of course, or from, even from one person to the other. 
and on, on you look uh, at all the company function of your organ of your yeah of your group here again the value will vary a lot depending on the business function of the company uh, you you know this part just this this uh, presentation with four uh, with the four uh, a row one two three four uh, looks so obvious that at least based on, on my ex own experience uh, people don't spend time being truly accurate uh, in this aspect and uh, that that's basically why we have a gradually enriched of framework and and so today i am specifically going to focus on on the value uh, here uh, for the company and as a first step uh, to, to, to go deeper uh, on this question uh, you can start conducting an exercise similar to this one uh, here on the screen just a result of an exercise that you can do uh, with the framework and when you you exhaustively identify all the functions uh, that could potentially even just potentially be impacted by the inner source program office and then this is just the beginning of the story because okay here don't be afraid with this slide <laughs> i won't comment all uh, <laughs> all that all that stuff but then working with the function people uh, or working as a core program team with selected members you will try to imagine all the potential positive effects at company level function by function uh, if i take as illustration a real example here because I, all the all the green posted here are the result is just an example of result you can get even if probably some of their some of them hopefully are applicable in your context uh, for instance, I discovered very innovative, uh, positive impacts of inner source. Uh, for instance, on if I take the one on the bottom left here, uh, management of scarce skills. Uh, here, the human resource hiring function uh, were really tired of having to recruit top level uh, JavaScript, React, uh, you know, kind of expert for each project. And they discovered that it will be uh, much more efficient, of course, to, to create a proper design system project centrally and share it across the entire, entire company. And human resources have then uh, become one of the primary sponsors of the ISPO. And as it addresses one of their critical uh, pain points, uh, finding care and critical uh, resources. Uh, I would just take another example uh, on the top right, uh, for instance, from legal uh, department. Here, again, it was a large organization uh, where the legal function became one of the strongest sponsors and advocates uh, when they discovered significant cost saving in setting up new projects by leveraging the process and legal framework established by the ISPO to speed up um, cross business unit or cross countries uh, projects legal agreements. Well, uh, at this stage, uh, it's, it's important to note that the exercise we just conducted, conducted here is not yet sufficient. <laughs> uh, <laughs> there are a lot of positives. Uh, we need to differentiate between the expected positive effects, so in green, oops, sorry, here. Uh, so in green, the so expected positive effect of the ISPO at company level. And but uh, uh, we 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 need also to 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 differentiate to to to, to analyze the, the 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 concrete and observable positive effect, the visible one. And furthermore, if we go. Um, by the way, if we go deeper uh, and we look for KPIs, uh, then from, from the concrete and visible positive effects, we can generally uh, analyze the data which is available. And this is typically where I will call uh, uh, Daniel Iscardo or Bitergia to help us analyze data and monitor it and to, to consistently uh, uh, have uh, this kind of data and make KPIs with it uh, over time. Uh, well, uh, the next step, uh, at this stage, uh, okay, it's, it's, as I said, it's not uh, sufficient. So 
uh, now we, we will continue with this exercise. And here you have the, the gray part uh, with, uh, and we have, uh, well, we have basically translated the expected positive effect into observable positive effect. You know, we have three types, events, contents, all these post-structuration actions. I won't comment on, on, them, on them here. Uh, this example will be made fully accessible, uh, as I said, under open source license, just like everything else in the framework, if you are curious about the content or examples. And now let's go ahead and let me introduce uh, our ISPO sponsors. Okay, Lisa. Uh, sponsors are basically, in a way, uh, the ISPO brokers. Um, and at this stage, uh, it's, it's extremely valuable to assign specific roles to your sponsors. Uh, on the field, sponsors are often not used at their full potential because of this, because we don't use them for, the, for, for what they can do uh, in an optimal way. Um, we have identified here uh, eight types of sponsors in this reading read. Uh, I believe this speaks uh, for itself. I can just take an example. Uh, the decision, make, a decision maker, if needed, sponsor will intervene on an ad hoc basis in case of disagreement only. Uh, another example, the obligating sponsor is typically someone who has authority and who can enforce rules within their scope or typically in their function. Uh, yes, by the way, sponsors, like all the members, have their own individual motivations. And it will be valuable to work with them to understand accurately, again, <laughs> their motivators. And actually, understanding the individual motivation of the sponsor will greatly influence their role and the action in which they can have the most impact. Uh, to give you an example, uh, if a sponsor motivation uh, is to, I, I will take this one here, uh, if the sponsor motivation is to align his strategic objective uh, under its responsibility, uh, so he's motivated by the fulfillment of his existing obligation outside of the ISPO. It's probably better in that case to give him a more a decision-making role. As opposed, uh, if, uh, you have, um, if you have a, a sponsor uh, that uh, is more motivated to, to buy the recognition in the company here, uh, it will probably be glad to take the role uh, of promoter and just, for instance, recording video or uh, speaking uh, in community events and so on. Again, uh, it may be obvious to you, but you, you can't imagine how frequently sponsors are, are not uh, used or that we are the most useful. Um, for instance, uh, by using a company top level executive uh, just uh, to record video or as, or as promoter. Okay, once again, uh, the goal is to go uh, beyond and the expected positive action and instead to have instead target observable and concrete action that will be beneficial to the ISPO. Um, here again, all the results here are presenting in the grid. You know, the work, all the framework is working like this. You have the reading grid and you have to adapt and to, 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 to fill it uh, yourself. Of course, the example, in the specific case of ISPO will help you because most of the time uh, you have uh, things in common from one ISPO to the other, hopefully. Um, okay, so uh, that, I think that's it for sponsor, but no, uh, that's still not enough. <laughs> Uh, as we have seen, we now have three key actors. Uh, and the problem, the problem we have, so is Polly, we have Jenny or is Polly, Lisa or sponsor, I will use their first name. And we have Carl now as decision maker in the company. And very often they are not the same people. And I say, they, they, I just said, they don't speak the same language. Uh, Jenny, uh, generally speak the language uh, of the community uh, with great enthusiasm, by the way. Uh, Lisa 
the sponsor speaks the language of her business function. And typically, Lisa is, for instance, uh, I don't know, a manager for human resource department or some, what, another function. Okay, she's an expert of, 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 uh, in her activity. And at the end uh, of the chain, uh, there is often a decision maker uh, like Carl who speaks the language of money. And that's it, that's, this, is, this is a reality. And I don't know if it speaks to, to the people here. <laughs> I would be curious to hear this. And so, uh, to summarize, Jenny will talk uh, all the time about all the amazing things uh, being done by the community. And on the other side, Lisa, who is a good sponsor, she, she hopefully she understands the community language well. We translate that language into the language of her own business functions. And later on, Lisa, our sponsor, will have to undertake a challenging task, uh, or maybe Lisa with uh, Jenny, uh, as, she, as uh, she does with all her projects, which is to convert a language into the language of money. Okay, well, here we have a sen first synthesis that you, you can, on, on the left here, you can basically uh, leverage and use a value grid uh, uh, that are available in the framework for to, which involve actually converting the community language into the language of function and business activities here. And this is actually a prerequisite uh, before going to the translation uh, into the language of uh, money. And on the right side, unfortunately, uh, this part is highly specific um, to your company, uh, particularly uh, your, um, depending on your business model. Uh, that's why it's not easy to find uh, really available uh, content for this aspect uh, on the internet. And for example, if you are a consulting company, uh, cost of one consultant uh, is most of the time very well known. Uh, and, but if you are working in the field of industry, uh, evaluating the risk and the cost of preempting an expert for a cross-functional program is much more, it's very tricky and really depending on the context and the size of teams, a lot of parameters. Uh, okay, I'm not saying this is not possible. Uh, I just say this requires company specific consideration. And now, now you have identified sponsor, hopefully sponsors in uh, the different impacted uh, functions. You can evaluate them based on their skills, uh, such as uh, on one axis, uh, on their ability to translate their language into the language of money, and on the other axis, um, their ability to, to understand uh, why the ISPO, uh, the, com the community, the ISPO, I say community, for me, ISPO is a community, uh, uh, to, try to understand uh, very well uh, the, the ISPO language. And so uh, typical sponsors, we are here on the top left, um, uh, who have a good understanding of, of the ISPO are valuable uh, source of moral support, of course. Uh, but do they have enough credibility in the company? This is, this is a question. Uh, on the other side, on the bottom right here, uh, those who are adept of, at speaking a language of money but don't fully grasp the benefit of an ISPO may be more challenging to convince initially. And however, once convinced, they can contribute significant, significantly in terms of credibility within the organization. Um, and then you will, uh, having this reading read, you will probably have several typologies in your organization. organization. And if you analyze it, okay, you have the first ideal situation. <laughs> All your sponsors are perfectly understanding the value and, and, what, uh, and the language of uh, ISPO. And they are very good at translating uh, it uh, in a company or, or a money language. Uh, this one is not so bad. And this one is a very 
common situation for my clients. Uh, I say very common because as a program lead, it is naturally easier to find people who support and understand you than those who challenge you. Because people here, okay, don't really understand the value, but I want, if they want proof that value will, and they want uh, data to uh, translate uh, and to, to, to demonstrate that it, uh, to demonstrate that to translate it to the language of money, uh, it's, they are most of the time more difficult to find. Uh, this second situation is at risk too, if all of them, uh, because uh, <laughs> uh, you, in this situation, as an ISPOLIB, you have probably no choice but to gradually learn to speak the language of money or to work a lot with your sponsors. Uh, from my experience, at least, uh, if you insist on discussing technical KPI, um, the number of fork, uh, the number of commit, or even worse, maybe the, the quantity of community uh, participants, uh, it's, it's, it's very dangerous in this situation uh, because remember, uh, translation of number of participants into money is, it costs a lot. So it's potentially, it's the best way to eventually be ignored or even stopped. Uh, I don't think I need to, to command this worst case scenario, but here you have a lot of work or maybe try to find other sponsors. And Okay, so for today, I would like to summarize uh, the approach I've just presented in five steps. So here you see the first step is, okay, work on the value and uh, very accurately from all perspectives, the requested value and the provided value for both members, sponsors, and your company. We have co covered a portion of the reading grid and some example from the MCF, MCF on this topic today. Uh, there are other grids also on the blockage, blockers and answers, possible answers to the blockers, uh, depending on each category, each function, uh, and so on. Then step two, take the time to identify all the potentially impacted function. And among them, among each, potentially each of them, find sponsor and assign them a role that match their motivations. Then step four, bridge the gap between the understanding of the community and the language of our business function. And repeat for each sponsor. <laughs> okay. And at the end, step five, don't forget to monitor your sponsor's ability to speak the language of money. And if necessary, fill, fill in the gaps, uh, at least partially yourself. And keep trying and don't give up. This is last, uh, <laughs> last uh, sentence, maybe. Keep trying and don't give up until you success successfully create something, uh, a, map, a map like this, uh, where you have uh, the right sponsor, the right place with the right role. And there are sometimes open position here like this. Well, um, as a conclusion, uh, I hope this reading read and part of this framework give you not only inspiration, but maybe some new call to actions to go beyond the, okay, it's a problem of mindset or it's a fault of middle management. Uh, really, the ambition of this is to approach cooperation in a company uh, more like a discipline uh, of medicine in some ways. Uh, Okay, we, we remain humble. Uh, idea is to analyze uh, symptoms and provide insights to better understand uh, when and why certain receipts working elsewhere may not work for you. And not, um, but the idea is not to try to promise uh, unreachable things. Uh, in the same way, uh, a doctor uh, uh, cannot promise you eternal life, uh, it, it can still avoid you to, to become sick too often. Uh, for instance, by giving you the advice to not drink uh, four liters of oil every day. So, uh, and, and, trust, <laughs> and trust me, I see many organizations uh, <laughs> drinking uh, four liters of oil every day. So, it's already a good thing. And 
we, we, ch we cannot change about the mindset. Maybe it's a, still a conclusion about the mindset. It's not, uh, we cannot, if I reuse my um, the, uh, comparison with um, medicine, uh, we cannot change the composition of your blood, but you can give you advice on uh, hygiene of life uh, to, uh, to, to improve it uh, in, the, in the mid or long term. And okay, and that's it. Uh, it's all uh, in open source, uh, partially today uh, on uh, a site which is unfortunately not only translate, not fully translated in English. And the target is to have it fully translated and available on GitHub uh, by September of this year, so in a few months. So I really hope that experts in cooperation, like um, I think most of you are in this foundation, uh, will one day uh, become contributors. Why not? And that's it. Marie.